Love is in the air. Despite the weather continuing to be as bipolar as your crazy aunt, the season of love never seems to change. And you can bet the love bug is spreading like an unvaccinated disease. Couples are buying giant stuffed bears no one wanted, discussing chocolates disguised as world-class treats, and withering decapitated roses that deserve a better death. They'll go see movies, buy an expensive meal, take a walk downtown, smash, bros, you name it, all in the name of love. Of course, not everyone can be so lucky. For some, February is that awful time of year when the world constantly reminds you how alone you really are. It's like the mother of the calendar year. Why won't you give me grandchildren? This is especially true for Nintendo fans who for one reason or another find themselves alone on Valentine's Day. So, how does the single Nintendo fan cope with their non-existent love life? We ship Nintendo characters! Welcome to the shipping game! Doesn't matter who or what you are, or what game you're from, or what species you might be. We'll force our weird romantic fantasy on anyone or anything. Please welcome our lucky bachelor, Simon Belmont! Alright, Mr. Belmont, folks at home might not know that you're not a Nintendo character. What made you want to come to our show tonight? I recently joined the Super Smash Brothers, so I wanted to settle down with a nice Nintendo girl. I want to find someone who sees beyond my muscles, the sweet teddy bear that's inside. Aww. Well, isn't that sappy? You're in luck, Mr. Belmont. Behind this wall are three beautiful Nintendo ladies eager to win a date with you. You'll ask three questions, and each contestant will have a turn to answer. Seems straightforward, right? Then go ahead and take your seat and read your first question. Contestant number one, if you met Dracula in a dark alley, what weapon would you use to vanquish it? I have a lot of experience taking down space creatures, but I can't say I know much about paranormal monsters. Knowing myself, I'd scan it to find its weakness and then attack it accordingly. Uh, but if I had to choose one, it'd have to be my ice beam. Ooh, very sexy. Okay, contestant number three, same question. Bite him in the face! <laughs> Maybe spit fireballs at him if I feel like it. And then I bite him in the face again! Ha <laughs> sounds sexy. Your turn, contestant number two. I don't understand what you're saying, but it sounds sexy. Ho oh, ho ho, Mr. Belmont has quite the conundrum in his hands, folks, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more of The Shipping Game! Shipping isn't a concept reserved for Nintendo fans. On the contrary, shipping is practiced in all sorts of mediums, from anime, to books, to sports. Heck, your parents were probably trying to ship you with that play day down the street. However, the subjective fact of the matter is, Nintendo fans ship. Hard. Whether you're happily dating or forever alone, you're either consciously or subconsciously pairing up your favorite characters as you play through a game. Of course, one ship might not appeal to another, but we can agree that people have different tastes and accept their choices. Right? <laughs> that said, not every Nintendo fan gets carried away in shipping. But there are many who find enjoyment in rooting for their OTP. Some might have a favorite character, so they project themselves onto the main character and picture themselves hooking up with that waifu. Clearly I'm just a rip stud like Ike. Others enjoy watching the interactions between characters and imagine they would make the perfect fit. Did you see the way Waluigi looked at Rosalina? Oh my gosh, that's adorable! All aboard the USS Wassalini! Hot scenarios like that happen all the time. It doesn't take much for ships to be built in Nintendo Fantasyland. There are also varying degrees of how hard fans ship. You could be someone who ships on occasion, but doesn't get too passionate about it. While the person next to you will, like, literally die! if their OTP turns sour. There are also those who only get passionate about certain series. Yeah, I don't play Fire Emblem for husbandos or waifus. Gross. Now Animal Crossing, that's all about the ships. Table for life, baby! It's amazing the intensities behind some of these ships, fan-made or canon. Take Ocarina of Time, for example. Normally in a Zelda game, fans ship Link and Zelda together, and understandably so. But Link has so many girlfriend prospects in Ocarina of Time, you can't blame people for pairing Link with other characters. You got Zelda, Sheik, Sadia, Malon, Rudo, Naburu, Navi, 
Wait, do people ship Link and Navi? Of course they do. Lobby shippers aside, hardcore Ocarina of Time shippers take their favorite girl and run, writing fanfiction, drawing fan art, and arguing with people online about it. It's almost like a hobby. Or even a cult. Join the Lalon fan club if you don't. May the goddess have mercy on your soul. Xenoblade 2 is a more recent example of passionate shipping. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That could be taken the wrong way. It's an example of shipping wars. We're receiving heavy fire from the Pyro troops. Now place your hand on my chest. And the Mitha troops are sundering our home base hard. Pervert. Sir, Neo troops have just appeared from the rear. Release the bomb. But I said release the bomb. Yes, sir. I love you too. I love you and all you guys. Anytime you have a great cast of characters, the battle for best girl and best boy is bound to arise. In Zelda 2's case, however, people don't just ship Rex, although he is shipped a lot. They ship Zeke, Morag, Poppy, Jin, Laura, and a handful of rare blades, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. This game is basically shipping fuel, and you can't help but pair characters you think make a good match. Hashtag Team Pyra. Honestly, that's a testament to the strength of Xenoblade Chronicles 2's cast. They are so likable and endearing. It's no wonder people grew fond of them. However, there are two minor complaints I have with Xenoblade 2 shipping. Problem number one. Rex is only 15 years old! Is he even old enough to be in a romantic relationship? Yeah, give him a break, he saved the world! Sure, he saved the world, but it doesn't mean he needs adult women fawning over him all the time. In that regard, Nia makes a little more sense since they're probably closer in age, but we all know how well that confession went. Wait, why are you team Pyra? Because she's best girl, duh! Problem number two! Open-ended relationships. The only reason why the Rex ship debate exists is because the story never says which pairing is official. While Xenoblade 2 ends poetically, the ending is still open-ended in some aspects, including ships. Who ends up with who? Does Rex grow up to marry someone? I wanna know! Calm down, it's obvious Rex will end up with Pyra and Mithra. Yeah, okay, but I don't know if I like the idea of Rex practicing polygamy. Ah, oh, so you're saying there's a chance! Now, I understand why Monolith Soft didn't give an epilogue to establish OTPs. Developers usually like to leave the final shipping to the fans, and try not to leave someone's best girl or guy out of the equation. In fact, many Nintendo games with romantic undertones don't have a final kiss scene or they lived happily ever after ending. Rather, they let the player's imagination decide what happens next. That is, if there are romantic themes in the game, don't expect your inkling to find love on the battlefield anytime soon. For me. One Nintendo series that mixes hardcore shipping with open endings is Fire Emblem. Since the third game, unit supports have always played an important part in gameplay providing two units improved skills when fighting near each other on the battlefield. Later on, they introduced support ranks, which sometimes unlocked special dialogue for the pairing. If you leveled up the right units to A rank, the game provided in-game dialogue about the pair's love life. And then Awakening and Fates happen. Personally, Fire Emblem shipping is quite fun. The characters are always well designed, and most games have excellent writing for them, making them relatable and endearing. The more connected to a character you are, the more likely you'll find a ship for them. Proven fact, look it up. The shipability of their characters truly makes Fire Emblem the powerhouse it is today. While recent Fire Emblem games have taken the shipping and the dating a little too far, I'd be lying if a part of me doesn't enjoy playing Love God. Mm hmm Arthur, I got a new companion mm -hmm. for you. Say hello to Mozu. Mm hmm I don't think this is a good idea. Mm hmm <laughs> I don't care what you think. You have no choice. Have fun, you two! Mm hmm. Um, what do you like to eat? Justice! However, my favorite Fire Emblem ship doesn't come from Awakening or Fates. I bet he's gonna say All and Celica. No! They're number two. Number one is Ike and Alincia. How many of you have played Path of Radiance? Probably not many since it's sold so poorly. But those of you who have, Surely you know the magnificence that is the Ikea ship. Ike, a courageous, strapping young mercenary, meets Alincia, the beautiful secret queen of Crimea, as she seeks refuge from an enemy kingdom. Together they take back the Crimea kingdom from Dane and defeat the Mad King Ashnard. When it's time for Alincia to give her final speech and usher in a new era for Crimea, 
who encourages her, supports her, and gives her the confidence she needs to rule her kingdom? Is it that stale end piece of white bread Joffrey? Huh? No, it's my man Ike, taking her hand and introducing her to the people. This final scene where she holds his hand close to her, cemented them as my OTP. But the Japanese doesn't imply any romance! This was made up by the localization! If you read the entire Japanese text, you will find hints of Alencia's feelings towards Ike from Alencia herself and other party members. On top of that, this final scene in Japanese implies even more her feelings for Ike. If that's not love, I don't know what is. Uh, I think you might be too invested in this. Huh. Granted, this is my OTP. And if you disagree with me, that's fine too. But I'm sure Intelligent Systems and I see eye to eye. I'm actually playing through Radiant Dawn right now for the first time. And I can't wait to see their relationship blossom. Uh, yeah, about that. They, uh, they don't get together in the end. What? Ike becomes a loner. Alencia marries Joffrey. No! Well, there's always Nephany. While Fire Emblem has plenty of juicy ships to fall in love with, the pinnacle of Nintendo ships is Mario and Peach, who apparently at a rocky point in their relationship right now, so we're going to leave them be and go with Link and Zelda. The classic hero saves princess story. Many a Nintendo fan started shipping because of Zelda Link. For some, it was Ocarina of Time, like we mentioned before. But most games in the series heavily imply on a relationship between the two wheelers of the Triforce. Even Zelda and Link's relationship in Breath of the Wild was a key point to the plot and helped progress Zelda's character. However, the Zelda game with the best Zelda Link ship is Skyward Sword. There were so many touching moments between the two. Link catching Zelda, Zelda practically daring Link to kiss her, Link protecting Zelda, Zelda protecting Link. Link's heartbreaking when Zelda seals herself in crystal, Zelda pushing Link off a cliff. I particularly like the scene where Zelda jumps on Link's Loftwing. It's a cute moment between them as romance in the air plays in the background. Hey, you two should kiss! It all culminates to the final scene. Zelda and Link stand on top of the Hylia statue, viewing the beautiful landscape. She turns. She tells him she wants to live on the earth and asks Link what he'll do. He nods. And then they don't kiss! Why, wait, why would you do this, Nintendo? They are the cutest couple you have ever created, and you refuse to let them kiss? <sighs> My headcanon, they populated and found Hyrule. If you couldn't tell, I'm no stranger to shipping, and maybe I get a little too fired up about it, but it's all in good fun. The important thing is to not get carried away in it, because you never know when it's going to come crashing down. <laughs> oh, Ixia. Nintendo stories and characters are so impactful, it's hard for fans not to ship them. Again, shipping occurs in all fan bases, but it's especially fun to watch your favorite Nintendo couple share a moment or two. So keep on shipping, guys. Just do so responsibly. Welcome back to the shipping game! Our current bachelor, Simon Belmont, has just finished asking his questions and is about to find out who his perfect match will be. But first, Mr. Belmont, what are your final thoughts? Number one sounds athletic and sexy. Number two sounds cute and sexy. Number three sounds wild. That's it? Yeah, just wild. Oh, well, good to hear, Mr. Belmont. And with that, it's time to pick your perfect match. It was really hard, but I choose number one. Yeah. Well, I guess that's good yeah. to know, Mr. Belmont. Yeah. But you don't get to decide. <laughs> Our audience does. Hey. Did I forget to mention that? Looks like we have our results. And the winner is... Contestant number two! Oh, it's a good puppy, yes! Another happy ending, folks. I love puppy. Thank you for watching The Shipping Show. And remember, if it breathes, we ship it. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. What are your favorite Nintendo ships? Do you have any Nintendo crushes? Don't worry, I won't tell. Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, consider subscribing. We also have a second channel for podcasts like our Zelda-themed show. Shout out to Chase, Rad MVP, My Echo, and Joseph for their donations on Patreon. Hope you all find or are enjoying true love this Valentine's Day. And if not, you're not alone. Goodbye, you good people. Ah!